Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're back with the BMW E63, the 630i with the N52 engine. Now, if you guys remember, I previously bought this car. Now today's video is gonna be about programming every single module on this car. Now I know many of you have been waiting for this video and asking me to do a video like this on the E60, E63 range so you guys can get to see how you can update your car if you ever have to. Now, many of you have been asking me for a certain product to be able to program these cars, and today, I'm glad to say I'm gonna be revealing that to you also in this video. So let's get onto this video, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. What? God damn, get it done, will ya? Woo! When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories we run into New York so you know okay guys so what I'm going to go ahead and show you is show you all the modules on the BMW E63 I'm going to show you how outdated the iDrive is in this car before we go ahead and update it then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll get the scan tool plugged up and also show you this new product that I know many of you have been asking me for for a very very long time and I've never been able to link one up until now until a company a finally being able to actually make one. And I'm gonna be showing you what this product is in a second, but I'm gonna show you everything in the car that needs updating. And what we're gonna do, and I'll show you how old the software is on this car. Then we're gonna to get to updating the car and I'll show you the tool we're gonna to use to be able to do that as well. Okay guys, so if you can see there, this is the iDrive section. And if you can see, this is the old brown color. Now, the new software is not brown anymore. It's actually gray. Um, so this is how you know it's on the old, old system and never been updated. Now obviously the other modules I can't show you, but if this is all brown, it means it's never been updated by BMW or nobody, because the newer menu is all grey, which you'll see after we finished updating it. And this is one of the reasons we are going to be updating this E63, because everything isn't functioning as it should. And BMW obviously, as you know, released a lot of updates later on as these cars went on and on and on. They were meant to be updated every year, which many people just didn't take them to the manufacturer to have them updated. This is one of the reasons we're gonna be updating it. And after we've done it, you will see that screen will change to gray instead of this nasty brown color. And if you look at the menu settings as well, it's all very, very old. If I can get into it, you'll just see here, um, it's very, very old on, on the screen. You can see how slow it is as well. It's not working very well because of how outdated the system is. So we've got to get on and update all that. Um, the battery is very low. So we are gonna sort that out in a minute. So let's get on to showing you the product and getting this car updated. Okay guys, in front of me, as you'll see here, this is the Tornado 9000 by Top Don. And if you can see on the box, it says it's a 12 volt, 24 volt battery charger and stable power supply. Now, as you can see, it delivers up to 90 amps and constant voltage for vehicle programming and extended KOEO diagnostics. This is Top Don's latest um, product, which I'm so glad they actually released. Now, I worked alongside them to manufacture this because I kept telling them there was no voltage stabilizers on the market for programming. And obviously they looked, took my word for it. Many of you guys kept messaging me asking for one. They actually sent this to me and it's gonna be the first time I'm actually testing it. We're gonna find out how good it actually works and I do believe it's gonna work faultlessly like all Top Don's products. You can see on the side here, it's got constant voltage supply. Supply mode is capable of providing constant voltage for vehicle programming and extended maintenance to ensure success and avoid vehicle and battery damage. Multiple protective features, adjustable current and voltage, precise detection, nine stage smart charging, revive and optimize. <clears throat> you can see on the back there as well, it does everything you want, able to charge batteries from 20 amps to 2,800 amps an hour, 150 cold cranking amps and up, including cars, trucks. You've got there, it's got nine step um, smart charging, pre-charge, soft start, bulk charge, absorption, and then let's recondition, maintain. It's got every feature you want on such a big stabilizer like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it. Obviously it's a very, very big box. So do give me a second while I just unbox it. Now, I've not used this as of yet. Um, I ain't even got it out of the box. So you can see here, inside, it's not been unboxed at all. So the plug's not been used. I would have thought I'd use this the first time on the video to show you guys how it looks. It's extremely heavy. 
and that sticks heavy as well, which I'm expecting that to be the cables. So you can see right here, this is the unit and it feels very, very solid. Um, like I say, it feels very, very good quality as well. You see that's where the battery terminals go on right there on your ports and then you've got your plug, which you've got to plug in obviously. Um, I don't think it's long enough, we might have to get an extension lead out. But you can see here as well, it's got USB chapter if you want to charge and you've got all your modes on here which you want to set on the mode you want it on and you can up the power and do whatever you need to do so this also has um, a temper built in temp sensor that you put in and you can pull it on the battery and it can read the temperature which i think will be in the box here so you'll see this is the lead they're in a very heavy box the leads very heavy you've got your bolts and uh, allen key inside the box as well along with your instruction booklet now i'm just going to get it all out so i can show you everything because we need to get it out anyway to be able to use it and you can see right here these are the cables that are going to be attached to the unit and you can see there that's the port that's the one that's going to detect you got your ports there to close them out as well on top so they're not open and i'll show you this is the temp sensor right here that's attached to it so it can detect the temperature of the battery make sure it's not getting hot or it's not too cold or it's not getting enough amperage or voltage we are going to have to tie these onto here, so we need to remove these nuts up here, just quickly. Um, and we need to remove that one. Now you can see there's nuts on here, so we need to spin them off. And we need to pop this up as well. That's for the battery temp sensor, you just stick that in here. Just like so. And then what you want to do is get your cables and attach them correctly. So you'll have plus right here, and you'll have your negative right here. And then what you want to do is spin these back on. And then you want to make sure they're straight and lock the cables up properly. And then what we'll do is you'll use the toy inside, you can see here, which I'm going to use to clamp down the bolts, which is just like that. And just like that as well. We've got that clamped down. Now what we can do here is we can, I believe, put them over like that. And you can put this over on here like that and then on the end it should look something like that the caps on top your leads are connected with your temp sensor as well which hangs right there you've got your lead they're perfectly more than long enough you can see here very very long cables in, indeed um, it's super super long and that's all there is to it guys then all you've got to do is plug it in and get using it straight away which we're going to go ahead and do so that is the top don tornado 9000 we are going to be using this to supply voltage to the car i'm going to set the voltage i'll show you how to do that then we'll get on to plugging up the tool once we get voltage connected to the car and we've got everything powered up so it can't everything stabilized before we start programming okay guys so as you can see we've now got the top don t9000 connected to the car and as you can see i've now got it on supply mode you can see up there showing 13.4 volts which is about 44 amps now that is actually set, everything's connected to the car, the leads are connected, you've got more than enough cable for the leads to be able to use this even on the floor and keep it up and keep the cables on the car. The reason I've got it up here so you guys can be able to watch that as well as me programming the car. The car's obviously being powered, that's how much amperage is actually sending to the car at the moment. Obviously that's gonna change when we start programming depending on what the modules need and how much power they're gonna need at the time and how much drain's gonna be on the car that it's gonna supply more voltage. You probably will hear the fan kick on if it has to give extra power, um, that will go on by itself. When you do select the mode, you will have to press the start and stop button to stop the function and change the function if you want to. Obviously that's to up the voltage, 13.4 is fine. You don't want it no higher than that for programming. It just needs to be around for over, just over 13 volts and 13.4 is literally perfect for programming. Um, it comes straight out of the box, ready to use straight away so you don't have to alter anything. 13.4 will be fine for any car. It doesn't matter if it's a BM or whatever else. No matter what car you program, it will always be fine. Now, I'm gonna leave this running. I'm gonna leave it all plugged up so you get to see everything in action on here, programming as well as the stabilizer, the voltage, changing and everything else. So you guys get a drift of how this thing works and this will be pinned in my comments box below. Bear in mind, there is limited stock of these guys. So once they're gone, they are gone. I believe there's only three left in stock right now and Top Don do not even know when they're gonna be making more because people have been going crazy for this. It's been released. It's been one of their biggest sellers because as many of you guys know, Finding a good voltage stabilizer and one that can do it all is very, very hard. And having Top Dom develop one was one of the best things probably ever on the market today. Top Dom smashed it and brought this out. 
and this has become a huge seller. So if you are in the market for one, guys, do go and buy one. They're around 800 quid, which is probably around $1,000. They will be on Amazon. There's only probably around three to four left in stock, and Top them told me they don't know when they're gonna be distributing more at all. So if you don't grab it now, it ain't gonna wait, wait, wait around for you. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, we've got the laptop ready, the voltage stabilizer now plugged in, which, as again, is the Top Don T9000. It will be pinned in the comments for you guys to go and check it out. As I said, there is limited stock of these, so if you guys do want one, and then many of you have messaged me for years asking for one of these, and this is the best one ever released because it can do everything. It's not just a voltage stabilizer, it charges batteries, it maintains them. It's one of the best bits of kit you'll ever find on the market today. <clears throat> we are gonna now be plugging up the ICOM and we're gonna start programming. We're gonna use WinKFP and we're gonna use IMPA to read all the modules and update them. I'm gonna plug in the ICOM and then we're gonna get rolling. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get the IP from here, which is a system I use, which is ITOOL Radar. I'm gonna use, ITOOL Radar will show the IP of my ICOM. Everybody's ICOM is gonna be different, just remember that, so there's no point thinking you can copy my one for your one. They're all different. You can lock it through here, but I wouldn't advise it. I would advise locking your icon via this, which is Easy Connect. This is the easiest way of doing it. Um, and it will save you a, long, a massive headache in the long run. Uh, Easy Connect is something I always use. So we go to remote, and then what we're gonna go to is we're just gonna click base, and then we'll click IP, and when we enter what we see there on um, ITIL Radar to lock it up. So it's ours, and then that way it can't unlock unless we unlock it. Obviously the cable's moved out of place. Now, once we put that here, we'll now shut ITOOL Radar down and we're gonna do ICOM lock and you should say locked. So we'll just do check. And you can see there the green line and it now says ICOM locked on the screen, which is what you wanna see when you do it. And it will just process the changes. And once it's done, just click continue. And you just click that down. And now we go to IMPA. And we'll just get a read on IMPA and we'll make sure everything's working. Now, obviously when IMPA loads, we should be able to see the battery and ignition working, which we can, which we can see right there. Now, this is one thing I wanted to explain to a lot of you, and this is the reason why I chose to do this on the laptop, and I'll just let you be able to see there. So when you come onto Impa, many of you always message me just saying that you don't have your chassis. You will not have your every chassis of your car here. So for instance, if you've got an E60, that will apply for E61, E63, and E64. If you've got an E65, that will apply to the 7 Series E65 and E66. You've got an E70, that will apply to your X5s, and your X6s, E83 will apply to E82 as well. So you just use the same files, E85, E87, E90. They're all the same. They're all the same files that are used for regardless of E90, E85, E87, does not matter. You can use any of them. It doesn't matter what your car is. If you don't see your car there, all of them will work fine. They're not gonna have every specific car there because it would fill up a whole list and it would just make it un usable therefore you just have to know what you're doing and you just use if you've got an e82 use an e83 if you've got an e81 use an e83 if you've got an e91 use e90 very common sense very very easy to do so what i'm going to go ahead and do right now is i'm going to click e60 so and you guys can get to see what exactly what i'm doing so you'll see here this is an e60 i'm clicking on and bear in mind this is an e63 now you can see here it's all working perfectly so what i'm going to do is click ULF. ULF which is the user information field, and we can see there all the modules. So what I'm gonna do right here, this is what I like to do, is I'm gonna take a picture on my phone of all the numbers right there, so then that way I don't have to use Impa again. What I do here is I just get my phone, and I will just take a picture like that of everything I just see on the UIF, and then what I will do now, as I will show you, is we'll close Impa, and now I've got every bit of information I need from there, I can just close this down and then open WinKFP. And now with WinKFP, I can click comfort mode, go to update ZUSB, and I know which module it is. So for instance, on this car, it's an MSV70 ECU we're gonna be updating. So we'll update the ECU, so we'll just click that. Click OK, we'll click done. We'll do program ZB update. And you'll see down there, it comes up a new number. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. We'll have a new number there. And we're just gonna click yes to that right now. We'll click yes. Now you should hear the car start programming. You'll probably hear the gong come on in the car because it's gonna enter programming mode. As soon as we click okay, just click okay to that. 
and now you're going to see it's going to prepare the car for programming. So now what you'll see is, as you just heard there, fuel pumps priming. You can probably see on the stabiliser as well. The um, amps have gone up now, where it's lost connection to the fuel pump while it's preparing the DME for programming. So the fuel pump will prime like that. It's perfectly normal as you prepare the car for programming. So do not worry about it. It will shut itself off after the programming sequence is locked in, which it has now, and now the programming will start. Now that will program, and after that we'll move to the fuel pump. Now I know many of you will think to yourself, why aren't I, you know, crapping myself here? That's because I'm perfectly used to this. I've done this so many times in my life, it's unbelievable. So for me, it's very, very easy to understand what to do, what's gonna happen and what's not gonna happen. Now obviously using WinKFP there is risks. You have the risk of bricking your module, you have the risk of um, destroying a module, module not coming back online. Therefore, this is why WinKFP improves all the factory software, not dealer software. Impa, WinKFP NCS Expert is factory software what the Germans use to program and code these cars. Um, dealers use ISTA and ISTA P. They made it very easy for them to understand so they can't make a mess up. Everything's done automatically for them. That's why you need to know what you're doing when you're using this because it ain't as straightforward as people make out. You can't just program the module and think that is it. It doesn't work like that. You didn't have to go and recode everything on the car to make everything resync with each other. Afterwards, otherwise everything will be out of line and you end up with a lot of codes. If you touch, for instance, the steering column, which is all the switches on the steering column, your indicators, your wipers, that will throw a steering angle reset, which you will need to do the whole steering angle calibration again once you've updated that. Same with a fuel pump and a DME. The DME and the fuel pump will lose the synchronization together. They won't run right, so you need to recode them as well. There's a lot of different things you need to do, and you still could end up with a lot of fault codes to do bear that in mind. Now, the one thing I will say is, since we've had this voltage stabilizer on, I haven't heard the fan go on, and I think that's really, really good. Um, most voltage stabilizers, when they're taking a lot of power, for holding the voltage steady, the fans end up usually kicking on because of they, you know, they were using a lot of power so they end up overheating and they need to work harder. This one hasn't done that so far and I'm really, really impressed. But, uh, the quality of this top down charge is really, really good and you're seeing it in action. It's managing to program the car. The car's power is staying steady. I've had no issues with it. And it's why I said, guys, if you are in the market for one of these, this is probably the best one you will ever get. As I said, I helped Top Don design this. They asked me what I thought um, was needed for the market. And when they asked me, I told my voltage stabilizer. It was the one thing, there's so many scan tools out there. Anyone can get a scan tool, but a voltage stabilizer, nobody can get hold of. And you have to search high and low for one. And Top Don went and smashed it and made one. Obviously now Top Don have made it. There will be other manufacturers that will try and release one, hoping that they can actually beat them and do it for cheaper. But it will be very hard especially with the competition these days to make a voltage stabilizer any cheaper because voltage stabilizers are expensive anyway and you cannot beat the quality of this top down one it feels nice feels and it feels so professional and this will go alongside obviously my phoenix pro that many of you guys would have seen as well that will go alongside that i am planning to get a proper dedicated diagnostic um, trolley to carry around with this on top and obviously my diagnostic tools like laptop the icom and have everything set up properly for when I need to do things like this with the cars, because you can see it ends up a big mess, cables everywhere, plugs everywhere, because that's what it's for when you're doing this. I suppose this is where my name, the doctor, comes from, because it looks like I'm doing all surgery to a car, which <laughs> it looks that way of all the wires running everywhere. So this is how much it you really do, takes to program a car. It's not as straightforward as many people make out. Um, this is the, all the equipment you have to have when programming a car, ICM for me. I'm not sitting here worrying about my battery going dead or flat because I'm using the correct voltage stabilizer. Most people seem to think you can use a battery charger. That's not correct. This is a battery charger maintainer and a voltage stabilizer. But the difference is it's got all the modes, not just a battery charger. And many people think you can use that and you cannot. So if anyone tells you to use a battery charger, take my advice, do not listen to them. It is not possible and not suitable for these cars. So we'll just leave that to continue updating. And obviously you can see there it's working as fast as it can. Obviously it is on the old software version. I am updating it now and then we'll go through, update the fuel pump. We'll update everything we need to do as we go along. We just keep updating everything um, until we successfully get everything updated. Like I say, it can take a bit of time. There's certain things I'll update and certain things I won't. But for instance, the CAS is not needed to be updated. It's not a bit, it's gonna make no significance value to the car. You're not gonna see no benefits in that, so therefore I'm not gonna update that. Uh, steering column switch, I may update that. Um, that's quite quick to update. The fuel pump's quite quick to update. 
Um, the IHK is quite quick to update. It's just a CCC. Certain modules will take longer than others. Um, just bear that in mind, depending on how big the system is, how much data it has to hold, it will take a lot more than um, your normal, you know, IHK panel or something like that, you know? So do bear that in mind when programming. Think about what you want to program on the car and do you really have to program that before you go ahead and program it? Because not everything needs updating and not everything you're going to see a benefit from. The main benefits you'll see is from an iDrive if it's like this, as I showed you in the beginning of the video, or uh, your ECU or your gearbox. Them kind of things you'll notice the difference. Other things you won't notice any difference whatsoever. Um, the IHKA you will. Light control module you won't notice any difference either. Things like that you just won't notice any difference at all. So we are approaching the end of this update. And once that updates, you'll see in a minute, everything will come back online. You'll hear it gong again. It will then say programming completed. We'll then move on to the next module as well. I know how the, this off my head of the routine of how the car goes. So I'm prepared for what's gonna happen next and what I need to do next. Now, the reason I programmed the DME first and then the fuel pump is to put them both back into sync when I program the fuel pump as well. So as you can hear there, fuel pump primes again, heard the gong, and now you should see programming successful. Now do bear in mind as well guys, when you actually do this, make sure you've got at least half a tank of fuel in your car because the fuel pump primes like that. And when it primes, if you don't have fuel, it'll burn itself out. So do remember that as well. As you can see there, that was the calibration file red. Now it's gonna do the update. So we just clicked okay. And now you'll see there, this is we a lot faster. That was the calibration file. This is the flash file that is now gonna write. And as you can see there, it's gonna lot quicker. So now what happens is, this will recalibrate, as you can tell you, the fuel pump wasn't synced with the DME. So now what's gonna happen is, this will write now the flash file, the calibration file, and you'll see them both now come back together and the fuel pump won't be buzzing like that because they'll merge back together and meet. So they'll be able to uh, calibrate together again. Therefore, the fuel pump won't buzz like that. That's what happens. That's the sound you'll get if the program wasn't successful or you've bricked a module, your fuel pump will stay on buzzing like that. And that means you've bricked a module. Now you'll see it should say programming successful and the fuel pump should stop as you just seen there. And you heard that this is open and close which means it was successful on the update and that's the Valvetronic motor making its noise as well. Everything come back into calibration. So now we've done that one guys. Now we're going to move on to the fuel pump. Now the fuel pump, we're going to get obviously get our phone up again. We just want to see. Now I know which one it is off my head on this. So we'll just go here, choose the edge USB. And on here, on this, you want to look for EKP60. So we'll just go down the list and we'll look for it. So it's right here, EKP60. And if we just go to update ZUSB, it's a lot easier like this. So we look for EKP60, which is right here. We just click OK. We click Done. And we just click Program. And as you can see, there's a new one for that. So we just click OK and then click Yes. Now, many of you are probably asking how I know them off my head. And this is simply because of all the times I've done this. I've done this too many times. So I know every module from the E60 E63 off the top of my head without the need of having to look them up and know what they are. I can go straight to them just by, you know, knowing the car, the year of the car, the age, um, what modules they've got in them. So as you can see there, it's updating now. And then it will, again, should do the flash and then the calibration. Um, we'll just wait for it all to do, do its thing. And as you can see, this goes a lot quicker is what I said to you. Certain modules are quicker than others. As you can see there, that one's programming successful. So now we've done that. What we'll do here is we'll leave that one and we'll just keep updating all the modules as we go. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna go ahead and down through the IHKA. So we've got the IHK here, here. So we've got the high. So we've got the IHK high and the basic. Ours is the high. So we just click that, we click done. We click programs ZB update. And as you can see, there's a new number for that. So we just click yes. And then we'll program the IHK as well. And as I said to you, like I said, it's just about knowing these modules on this car. Now, I know this video is very long-winded. I am gonna try and speed it up in a minute because obviously you're getting the idea of how to program it. You know now what to do. It's very, very simple. Go into Impar, take a screenshot, and if you have to enter all the numbers to find them manually, then that's what you have to do. Obviously, not everyone's gonna know which ones they are off the top of their head. It does take a lot of time, a lot of experience to know like I do, straight off the top of my head without looking at my phone, what module is what. So, obviously, that's most of them being done. And obviously we will just, that's the IHK now, the fuel pump's done, the DME's done. Next we'll update the SNL, and then we're gonna update the CCC, which I think I might um, start that. And then I'll, um, we'll do the rest at the end of it because it's a very, very long update for that one. That one can take some time to actually update. 
um, but we'll do that after. Again, all you need to make sure before you update a CCC is that you've got an ICOM. You don't need to have an ICOM to update the ECU or any of these other modules. You put Bimic Geeks cable is perfectly fine. And I do recommend Bimic Geeks because if you've got a GM transmission, especially on your XIs, you will brick your transmission with a normal KDCAN cable. The Bimic Geeks cable is the only cable that can do the GM transmissions. Believe me on that. Therefore, I do recommend a big Bimic Geeks cable if you're going to use it or an ICOM. You don't need to have an ICOM. It's very expensive to buy. It doesn't make logical sense for most people um, who are not really in a trade or doing this on a regular basis like myself. So I do recommend a cable for most of you guys. Software, as many of you guys know, you can get it easily online if you need to. Um, as for the files, I don't know too much about that. Voltage stabilizer, on the other hand, you will need to try and um, buy one of these while they're in stock and while they're available because they are going to go out of stock very, very fast. As you can see there, it's been programmed successfully. So now we can just click OK to that and that one's done as well. So I think now you guys actually get the drift of how it's done. We are going to now go ahead and probably just update the CCC. And once we've done that, we'll probably come back on the video um, and I'll show you how everything looks after everything's been updated and what to do next. OK, guys, so as you can see here now, we're beginning to program the CCC and update it to the newest version. You can see there it's actually programming, it's on its way, but I need to explain to you one important thing that you must do when programming these. Now, as you can see here, I've got all the ICOM connected to update the CCC. Now, many people seem to think they can go and do this with a lead. You cannot update or program the iDrive with a lead. You can see there I've got the ICOM going and I've also got the most connected connected to the most ring that way it can program via there as well this is a must and important part that you need for programming the i drives you need to have that most connector and know it will not work with a cable thinking you can just buy that and plug it into your cable this has to be connected to an icon because they switch back and forth between ports to send communication data to the i drive to the system there's a must have if you're going to update the iDrive or anything else, the host, the tune, anything to do with the mortal media interface, even the Bluetooth module, you must have an ICOM. The MMI CCC, uh, which is the gateway, you can get away with using a cable, but this is a must if you want to update the iDrive. I will try and link all this in my description so you guys can go and buy it, as well as the voltage stabilizer. But now we're coming to the end of it, and you can see there it's programming quite quickly. So once it's updated, we'll come back and I'll show you the new layout. Okay, guys, as you can see now, it's hit 100%. It's spinning. Um, that's purely because it's just wrote the programming file. I don't know if it's going to write a calibration file for it now, but it's spinning, which is going to knock out the um, CCC back out of boot mode and put everything back to normal. So we're just waiting for that to actually finish up and tell us that the programming's okay. And then we can move and I can show you the iDrive. So I've got to say, we've got to give a big shout out for Top Don for sending me the power supply because that device has absolutely been incredible in the whole time I've been programming this car. It hasn't dropped voltage, it's maintained consistent voltage the whole way through, well, especially when we've been doing this and this has been a long process, especially through the whole gateway system, updating everything in sequence. And now we've done that, this should be the last update on this car. As I said, just remember, you need the icon and you also need that most connector which you can see right there in the glove box it's that the black there is still flashing while it's still writing the rest of the data and the icon so as you now see there guys it said Z usb update programming okay which now means the update has been completed successfully so now we're just going to click okay and now that is the job done of updating the iDrive system okay guys so as you can see here now this is the iDrive and you can see it's now got a new background after the update. If you can see, I've pulled all this mess out of here to get to the actual CCC unit because of we had an issue, which I had to address, but that's all sorted now. But you can see here, the iDrive is now fully updated and away from that brown background, it's now got the newer background and I'm very, very happy. So this completes the software upgrades. And as you can see, guys, it does work. So if you do have that old CCC background, do the update and um, yeah, you'll end up with the newer one. Okay, guys. So as you've seen now, I've now fully programmed this BMW E63. As you saw, it was on the old version on the iDrive and we managed to update it to the later version. 
Please do remember, you need to use an ICOM to update these cars. You will not be able to program this successfully with a DCAN cable, no matter what you see online. I know I'm gonna get people who's gonna think they can go ahead and use a DCAN cable because they can't afford an ICOM. If you're foolish enough to do that, then at the same point, I will not help you if you try and comment on a video saying your module has been bricked. It's very, very simple because you saw how I managed to use an ICOM. The next key thing you actually need to be able to program is this. As you saw here, and I just wanna give a big thanks to Topdom for actually sending this to me. This is a voltage stabilizer, a battery maintainer, everything you can want in one device. Let me just say to you, in the five hours I've been programming this whole car, this device has been faultless, absolutely faultless. Not once has the fan kicked on. On my other voltage stabilizer, the fan keeps on cycling 24 seven when it's, when it's either overheating or when it's using too much current. This one didn't do that at all. It has absolutely been phenomenal. It kept the voltage continuously. Everything went perfectly and I can't rate this product enough at all. It is really, really incredible and I'm so glad Top Dom actually sent this to me. You guys, trust me, go and buy it. It will only show probably three or maybe even two left now when you actually see this video. So if you are looking for one of these, this is probably the best bit of kit you can actually have at home, in your garage, wherever you are. This is absolutely incredible. And you know Top Dom, they stand behind their products. If something was to go wrong, you know they'll honor their warranty and give you a new one straight away. So I hope this video is gonna help a lot of you who wanna be able to program your car. And as you've seen, if you do have the old iDrive software, you can program and update it successfully. Just bear in mind, if you get a car and you see your car hasn't been updated at all and it's still on the old firmwares from 2005, 2006, you can update it. All I'll tell you is to use an icon and I'll try and link that in the description box down below and in my comment box. Thank you very much for watching guys and I hope you've actually enjoyed this video and I hope now I've shown you how to program the whole car. I know this video is very, very long winded, but as I said, there's a lot of information you guys need to see, need to hear. And obviously I couldn't shorten it any shorter than I've actually done. So thank you very much for watching guys. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.